Teresa, welcome to my channel. Thank you for joining me here today. And as you can see by what I have on the table in front of me, today's video is totally different to anything that I've been doing. I really just fancied a complete change. Um, it's something that I've been wanting to try to, to do and video for a while. And that is to create a model, a, a miniature, a little diorama, call it what you will. I mean, this it's it's about eight inches high, and I fitted this into this little bell jar. In my free time, I watch a lot of YouTube videos um, from creators who make models, who make miniatures, and it's, I'm always inspired to have a go and actually try and make something myself. And you know, I, I put it off because. The process is a long one, it, it's time consuming, there's a lot of waiting in between different stages and I wasn't sure whether I'd be able to actually do that um, and I've, I've taken the time this week, I've had some free time and I thought you know what I'm going to sit down and see how it goes and I will up front I will say this has been a learning curve for me, normally for those of you that watch my channel you know that I, what, I have a top down um, view from my camera where it's pointing directly down at my desk to work on and I began this project with that camera set up as always and it just wasn't really working so I do apologize that the first sort of stage of this video um, tutorial the camera angle is not very good um, at all I'm not happy and so I then got another tripod and got the setup with this view that you can see here um, and, and that works a lot better. It's taken some getting used to. I'm not used to having the camera in that direction so there's been the odd occasion where I feel I've not been very well in frame or I might not have been in focus too well but um, as I say it's a learning curve. I've never tried to record a tutorial for this type of project before. The other thing that I will say is that I would probably be better off recording a voiceover once I've edited down all the hours of footage. Um, I haven't done that this time I've sort of got sped up sections with music and little bits of, of me talking real time, you know, explaining what I'm doing. But as I say, it's a learning curve. I would love to do more of this type of video if you want to see it. And I promise that I will learn from my mistakes and try and improve my production technique um, in future. But this little diorama, for those of you who don't recognise um, the characters that I have here, is inspired by the Studio Ghibli animation of Princess Mononoke. These are little Kodama forest sprites. Um, they appear in, in the film to signify that the forest is healthy and healing itself and they're the cutest little things ever and I just wanted to create this sort of as, as, a, as a way of me saying I love this film, I love these little characters and I want a bit of that in my room with me. There are lights in here, there is um, glow-in-the-dark effects in here which you will see as you watch the video if you watch it through to the end and see the pictures at the end. And as I say, I hope you enjoy it. I hope um, that this is, this is something that you might be interested in seeing again. And again, I do apologise, it might not be my best recording of a video tutorial but we're living and learning as we go and as I say I would love the opportunity to do more and improve my technique. But for now I'm going to move this out of the way and I shall be back to show you how I created it. I'll begin as always with a little rundown of what I'm using today. The models I'm making I want to fit inside this glass bell jar. This is one I bought from Ikea a while ago. So that'll define the sort of dimensions that I can work, of, work on. It's sort of going to fit in there. And I think that'll help protect it from getting dusty and being knocked and things like that. The model's going to be made from polymer clay. So I have this Super Sculpey medium um, grey clay that that should work well. I have wire to create my armature. I have a one millimetre and a two millimetre aluminium wire here to sort of create the trunk and the branches. Some tin foil, I'll use that to build up a bit of a base. I have some cardboard. Um, I have this bake and bond, bake and bond, bakeable adhesive, which this will help attach the clay to the wire. Um, you don't have to have it, but it does help. It, it makes life a little bit easier. I do have some decorative coloured moss here. This is like reindeer moss, and I'm hoping that might work for some of my foliage. 
And the other thing that I've got here is this little set of lights, a very small set of lights. And I'm hoping to be able to use those as well, just to add a nice effect to the finished model. I'm going to be using various paints, um, but I'll, I'll bring those on and, and explain what I'm using when I come to do the painting part. Um, I have to do the actual model making first. And it's a long time since I've used any polymer clay. Never used it on my channel, so this is a bit of a learning curve. Hopefully um, it'll, it'll work out all right. Um, but that's about it really for, for what we've got. But as I say, the, I, I found this little string of lights in my stash um, and I want to use them. And I'm going to conceal this in the base um, under the tree to be able to turn it on and off. So I'm going, what I've done to begin with is cut myself a circle of card which will fit it's just slightly smaller than the, the wooden base here, but it'll fit on there. And I'm going to use this to, to create my model on because I can then pop that, I can pop it into the oven, it'll be all right. And I've cut out this circle here, which is big enough for this light to fit in there and I'll be able to get at the switch. Now, by a stroke of genius, I had a little mini roll of sticky tape and I got to the end of it the other day and this was like the plastic reel that was in the middle of it and it is exactly the same size as this little light and fractionally deeper but it's the exact same diameter as this tea light so what i'm going to do is pop temporarily pop this piece of card back in i'm just going to hold it with a piece of tape and put this on it and then when i build up my base with this on it i can pop that out afterwards and I should be left with a void that this will fit in. I can poke a little hole to get the string of lights through but that's my plan anyway that's that's my plan to get this string of lights in because obviously I can't pop this in the oven and bake it with the polymer clay. So I'm going to basically um, get started with creating the base and the, the basic form of the tree using wire. So I'm going to just pop this in place with a bit of tape that I can remove afterwards. And the same with this, it's going to just go onto this piece of card. Just want to hold it in place. Just like that. And I can build a bit of um, a, a base, almost like a, a rocky outcrop around it. And then hopefully just pop that out afterwards. So I'm just going to scrunch up this um, kitchen foil to create the, the ground for my, that my tree is going to be stood in. I just want it to be mounded up a little bit. happy with that I like this sort of the the height that I've got there so what I'm going to do now is remove this little piece here and I can make a hole that my wire can go through. I 
like that. And then I'll be able, when I've finished, I'll be able to feed my lights through that hole and the little um, battery compartment will fit in the bottom. So now it's time to start working on the main part of the tree. And for that, I'm going to use some of this two millimeter wire and then I'm going to use some of the smaller wire as well. So now I need to work on the actual structure of the tree. So I'm using some of this two millimeter wire and I'm going to try and just sort of try and pick a, a sort of shape that I like. It's got to fit within the dimensions of the jar so I need to kind of bear that in mind. But I'm sort of looking for a sort of twisted pine sort of shape. I'll just have to kind of fiddle about with it until I sort of until I'm happy with what I've got. And I can use some of the thinner wire to attach other branches onto the main structure. pretty sure that my tree armature is, is going to fit within the dome. It's time to start working with this Sculpey and I'm just going to first of all roll some out to cover the base. Once I've covered the base I can get the um, tree in place and build some more clay around the bottom of that. Just going to poke that hole back through in the clay so I know where it needs to be. I'm going to take my tree and get it in position.
I've moulded some what will hopefully look like roots onto the, the base here. Um, a little bit extra texture, made sure I've still got that hole for my wire. Just adjusting the position of the tree again so that I know that it's going to fit inside the dome. So to cover the trunk and the branches, I'm going to roll out a piece of clay. And then I can make a slit in it and sort of wrap it round wrap it around the wire armature. I'll apply a little of this bacon bond adhesive as I go. On adding little sections to the wire until I've covered the whole thing and I've sort of smoothed it out as best I can join joined in the where the seams were I've just split the ends of the clay just to make it look like a little bit more of a bit of a branch and now I'm just going to try and create a bit of a bark effect and I'm just going to sort of use various tools just to sort of create some texture that should look really good once we've uh, got some paint on there. Trying a, a couple of different things, see what's going to work best. to go into the oven um, and I'm going to bake it according to the instructions on the packet and hopefully we'll get some real nice texture once it's baked. I'll be able to paint it, give it a couple of washes and really bring out that bark and the root detail that we've got here. So hopefully we've got what is now a better camera angle and I've baked my tree. It's nice and hard. Um, really happy with how this has turned out and I'm going to be um, painting it with acrylic paints. Obviously it's a tree so I've chosen some brown. I'm going to use this dark chocolate colour here, the Stacco Art Americana for my base coat. Probably going to then pop a dark wash of black just to sort of go in some of the detail on the trunk and then once that's dry I think I'm going to dry brush it with something like this driftwood colour here just to bring out some of the highlights. I'm going to do the tree and the roots first and then I'll do the, the ground afterwards. So just got paintbrush, I've got some of the brown paint in my palette and I'm going to start painting and it might take a couple of coats, we'll see what the coverage is like. Um, but I just need to get a nice solid colour all over the tree, the branches, the roots.
this first base coat of brown paint is dry it's time to apply a wash which will sort of settle into the grooves and create some depth and shadows and for that I've just mixed together a bit of black acrylic paint with plenty of water just so it's nice and runny and we don't want it too thick we need it to sort of run into the into the grooves and the texture that we've got on the polymer clay and then we can sort of wipe away any excess from the surface. And that's really sort of added a nice sort of depth to the colour. Just added in a few few more deeper tones, which hopefully when we come to do the dry brushing in a moment, we'll get a real nice contrast between the highlights and the shadows. For the dry brushing, I'm using this um, Driftwood colour paint here. I'm going to put a little bit on my brush and then take almost every bit of it off on a scrap bit of paper so that there is just the slightest bit of colour left on the bristles so that when I just brush it over the surface lightly it's going to pick up the highlights and the details of this texture that we created in the clay and really sort of bring out that bark effect. Thank you. really pleased with that effect it's really it does look like a, a nice old tree lots of cracked textured bark so very happy with that so I think the next thing to tackle with this will be the ground and for that I'm going to be using I think it's a mixture of grey and brown and then I'll step a little bit of green on as well
quite like that effect. We're probably going to add a little bit of texture, um, whether it be some moss or decorative sand or, or some kind of um, artificial grass anyway. But I think that's just a nice sort of dusting of colour on there, just to contrast with the, with the grey undertones that we've got. Now that our tree is, for all intents and purposes, done, we've got to put the leaves on, but the tree itself's done. I want to move on to the little characters that I'm going to place onto the tree. And these are called the Kodama, for those of you that have not seen Princess Mononoke. Um, and they're little forest spirits. They're really cute. They they glow and they they make these weird little noises, but their main purpose is that they show us that the forest is healthy and if, if the little forest spirits are about, then the forest is doing well. And I think they're so cute. Um, I, I want to make a few of these. So I've printed off this couple of reference pictures just um, for an idea of, of what sort of shape I need to create um, my little heads and bodies and I'm going to be making these out of polymer clay the same as I did the tree. So I'm just going to pop my reference picture to the side where I can see it and I'm going to just sort of create a few of these. I don't know how many I'm going to fit on the tree. I'm going to do them slightly larger in scale because in the film the, the trees are huge and these little forest spirits are quite small, but I, I don't want them to be little teeny tiny things. So the, the proportion is they'll be slightly bigger than they are actually in the film. Just so that, one, I don't struggle making teeny tiny little um, models, but also they they are sort of the star of, of this model, this miniature that I'm creating. So I'm going to start off by making their head making a little ball from polymer clay and their heads are anything from sort of a roundish to a slightly triangular shape and I'm going to make a couple of eyes using one of my ball tools this is just like an embossing ball tool And I'm going to create their mouth. I'm going to take a smaller ball tool to make the mouth. Like so. And really that's, that's all there is to the head. So I'm undecided whether I might actually attach that, I think, to a piece of wooden dowel. Um, might just make it easier to attach to the body. So this is just like a little wooden kebab skewer. And I'm thinking if I pop that in the head, when I come to uh, attach it, I can just sort of stick that in the body and it'll be a little easier. I'm less likely to squish them. So the body itself, looking at the pictures, the body's much the size that the head is. Then with some little short legs and arms. So this time going to take a similar size piece of clay, make it into more of an oval shape. I'm going to use my craft knife just to split that so that I can model that into two legs. little tube of clay and 
and just smooth that in around the top. people are baked and they don't set up very well but that's fine I'm going to be gluing them onto my tree once I've painted them and because in the film these glow I've decided I'm going to paint them with some glow-in-the-dark paint first off I'm going to give them a base coat of just some white acrylic um, just to help with the coverage this is just some deco art Americana white paint but then the glow-in-the-dark paint that I've got is this fantastic um, lit by Stuart Semple. It's a powder. You have to mix it with a base. I've got um, the, the super base. You can mix it in with acrylic paints if you want to. Um, you can mix it with water to make a water-based paint, like a watercolour if you want. But obviously I want it to be an acrylic, so I'm mixing it um, with the super base. And it is so cool. This is It really, really does glow. If I turn the lights down in here, you'll be able to see um, the colour that this actually gives off in the dark. As you can see, it really glows super bright green, really impressive um, stuff. So can't wait to use that on my little characters. But as I said, to begin with, just to help with the coverage, I'm going to give them a base coat of white. Their eyes, I'll just be using some black acrylic um, to colour the eyes in. So just getting my palette and popping some of the white acrylic in.
My base coat of white acrylic is now dry on the little Kodama figures and having got in such a mess getting white paint all over my hands and everything trying to hold the figures while I painted them I have decided to stick them onto some assorted bottle caps and corks just to make handling a little bit easier. This little guy still kind of wants to overbalance and fall over but the others are pretty firm and I'm hoping that I should be able to paint them with the glow in the dark paint a little bit easier now and get in a bit less of a mess than I did with the white. So as I said before I'm using this um, lit paint by Stuart Semple. I followed the instructions for mixing that up um, and mixing with the super base and I'm going to give a couple of coats again to these figures letting each coat dry in between the layers. couple of coats of the glow in the dark paint all I need to do now is paint in the eyes and the mouth with a little bit of black acrylic and a fine paintbrush I need to do is decide where the little Kodama figures are going to fit on my tree and add foliage to the tree and the ground. Now for the, the clumps of the of leaves on the tree because this is like a Japanese pine I'm going to use some of this coloured reindeer moss because it's, it is quite a nice sort of rounded shape and I'm figuring I can trim it and put a couple of clumps on. I do also have some of this um, Woodlands Scenics grass. I have a light green and a dark green colour. Um, I'm going to pop a bit of that on the ground and I might sprinkle a little of that onto the moss um, just to sort of add highlights. And I also want some other small, just like little sprigs of, of foliage, mainly I think around the base. And for that, I've got this um, artificial plant. It's from IKEA, it's just a plastic little plant, but I really like the fact it's this very small scale leaf and I could just snip bits off this and stick it on, glue it on and hopefully that'll give me the effect that I'm looking for. So I think the first thing I need to do is put some clumps of foliage onto my branches then I can arrange my little figures in place and then I can sort of fill in with other bits and pieces as and when I need to do so. Thank you. 
I've got those in, which are the, the bulky items, I can think about um, the smaller elements. So I'm going to go ahead and add some of this plastic foliage. I'm going to add a little bit of the Woodland Scenics grass. And then I have to get my lights in. I don't want to forget to put those in. can go ahead and add some of the grass. I'm using this decoupage medium. It's the same as Mod Podge, just different brand. This is the Americana decoupage. And I'm just going to water a bit of that down. I've popped some in my palette. Just going to add a little bit of water to thin it. And I'm going to apply some to the base where I want my grass to be. happy with the way that this uh, tree model's come out. I think it's it's cute, it, it's, it's got a nice um, feel to it. Uh, the tree trunk and the roots have got quite a realistic feel and then everything else adds a little bit of whimsy to it. Um, these little characters are super cute and I'm really happy with the fake grass and the foliage and everything that we've got going on there. So the last thing I need to do is sort out my little mini string of lights here. And what I want to do is I'm going to feed it through the, the base. But then I found I've got these little tiny flower shaped sequins. And I want to attach them to the little LED lights just so they look a, a little bit like flowers. The colour's going to... It, what, once the lights are on, you probably won't see that shade of pink too much because they're sort of transparent. But I just think that it'll just add a little extra detail rather than it be a bare light. I'm going to stick them onto the LEDs with this um, UV resin. That's what I was using to stick down the small pieces of plastic foliage earlier on. It's quick and easy um, and, and dries clear and solid. So that's why I'm going to be using that. But first of all, I need to feed the string of lights through the base because otherwise I'll be knocking off those little flowers um, as I feed it through. So 
So now that I've got those through, just have to give it a little bit of a wiggle just to, to get those lights through that small opening. I can begin putting these little flower sequins on. Just need to kind of twist these lights around the trunk and I think I'm just going to glue this top one to the top of the trunk just to hold it in place And there we've got our little lights just twisted around that tree, I think, which just adds a bit of extra something to it. And here's my finished little Princess Mononoke Kodama Forest Spirit tree that I've created. Really pleased with the way this has turned out. I have a lot to learn as regards modelling and also um, videoing and editing a, a tutorial or, or process video for this type of project. Uh, it's different to the type of things that I usually share on my channel so I hope you can forgive me and bear with me as I learn how to improve my skills with something like this. But um, considering it's been many years since I've created anything like this and I've never tried to record the process before, I'm really pleased with how this has turned out. I love the detail that I've got on the tree, um, the foliage, the, the cute little spirits, which hopefully I shall be able to turn the lights out and we'll see them glowing in a moment. Um, but yeah, I hope that you did enjoy this video. Please let me know if, if, if you, you did. I would love to try and make more of this type of project. It takes a little time, so it's not something that would come out on a weekly basis, but maybe once a month something like that and if it is something that you'd like to see me um, try and improve on then please do let me know in the comments below and please any suggestions for what type of model that you would like to see me create um, I'm you know always looking for suggestions for things like that um, so yeah I'd, I would be interested to know what you would like to see but as always um, if you did enjoy the video, please leave me a thumbs up, please like, please comment, um, all those things that show YouTube that you appreciate what I'm doing. Um, and I shall see you again soon. But for now, that's all. Bye.